Spring's almost with us. If you haven't got your soil in shape for the coming growing season, now's your chance. But hurry, because time is ticking. Hi, I'm Ben, and in this video, I'm going to show you the steps I take to supercharge my soil ready for the new growing season. It all starts with this wonderful stuff. It's important to top up growing areas with organic matter, such as compost or manure, at least once a year. Nutrient-rich material such as this garden-made compost is the lifeblood to a thriving garden. Think of it more as feeding the soil rather than the plants. Soil life honestly loves this gorgeous stuff and a thriving soil is of course healthy plants. Let's get some of it down to the vegetable garden. Without a thriving soil life, the plants growing in it would really struggle. If you think about it, the soil in nature is rarely left uncovered for long. There's a constant cascade of organic matter which lands on the soil and then is incorporated in it, feeding the soil life such as microbes, worms and all the beneficial bugs that make the soil such a wonderful place to be. These guys then unleash uh, all the nutrients within that organic matter and make it available to searching plant roots so they can tap into it. So you can see why our role in feeding garden soil is so important. Something like this garden compost here is really rather rich stuff. So you really only need to spread about an inch or say three centimetres over the soil surface once a year. Just get it nice and evenly spread with a rake and then there's no need to dig it in because the worms will do that for you. Few gardens produce enough compost to keep all beds and growing areas covered. Typically, I find I have to buy in at least one of these bulk bags of manure or compost once a year. Come and have a look at it. It's well-rotted manure, suitable for adding straight to the soil. This magnificent muck has been stacked for several months, which means it won't burn plants. That just means when it's really fresh, it's very highly concentrated in nutrients, and that can actually harm plants. This stuff is aged, so it won't. Now, this bag here costs me £60 or about $75 delivered. I reckon that isn't too much of an extravagance when you consider both the time and fuel it will have saved going back and forth to collect it from a free source. But if you have the time, it's certainly worth asking around locally. Most local stables, for example, are only too happy to get rid of their muck for free. But if you go down that avenue, please do check that what the horses or other animals have been grazing on hasn't got any herbicides because you don't want that ending up in your muck. Also, if it's quite fresh, you will need to stack it once you get home and leave it for uh, up to several months, really, until it's fully decomposed. Now, let's get some of this beautiful, rich stuff down on the beds. So, should you go for compost or manure as your primary source of soil supercharging goodness? I reckon garden compost is always going to come out on top. You're recycling what you have to hand and garden compost is generally richer in nutrients too. But if you run out of that, well-rotted manure comes a close second. And both manure and garden-made compost, I reckon, give the best results. I suspect garden compost is so incredibly good because of all the incredible life that's within it, which plant roots absolutely drool over. The best time to spread your organic matter is from late autumn to early winter. This gives all winter for your magical muck or crumbly compost to break down and soften up in the frosts so that the soil life can then get to work on it. It also gives you more time to get your shit together. But look, few of us are perfectly organised, so just make sure to get your organic matter on and spread before the end of winter, so it's at least got a couple of months to meld with your soil before it's time to plant. If you can't get enough compost or manure, you do have other options, and here are two of them. Under this fruit bush here, I basically dumped a whole wad of leaves that I raked up in the autumn. Now, plenty of them went onto the compost heap, but the excess went here. These will rot down very slowly, essentially acting almost like a slow-release fertiliser. 
they will get down into the soil eventually and the roots will have their fill. Then over here, we've got some partially decomposed straw. Now I got these original straw bales for an absolute snip, then grew tomatoes in them both last summer and the summer before that. I couldn't get another season out of them because they were beginning to disintegrate, so it made perfect sense to bring them out here, break them up and scatter them over the soil. Now, these will, of course, eventually rot down and feed these black currants here and this chunky old rhubarb too. It's always worth working with whatever organic matter you have to hand. The cheapest, most accessible stuff. It's all good. If you're interested in making more of your own compost, then do check out our most recent video on making super fast compost. Link in the description below. And while you're there, do make sure you're subscribed and have turned on notifications. Earlier editions of organic matter allow you to practice what I call my WESC method. Weeds, slice and cover, and WESC is best. Let me explain what that's all about. Now, when you sow or plant, you want a nice weed-free seed bed, sometimes called a stale seed bed. One way to do that is just to rake the surface of the soil ever so slightly to disturb any weed seeds that are there. And then you want them to germinate. Now, if you want to get a bit of a head start, you can cover them over with something that's going to trap the warmth. I've got this old window pane here, which covers the bed rather nicely. You can pop it straight on top or make a little box frame and then pop it on top of that. And what this will do is it will trap the sun's warmth and get the weeds to germinate a little bit earlier than they otherwise would. Once they have germinated, you can just remove the window pane and any box surrounds, expose all the weeds, and then get in there with your hoe and just slice them off at ground level to leave the soil nice and clean. You've now got fresh, clean, prepared seed bed and you want to keep it that way. So now we get on and cover. And for that, I recommend using just plain cardboard like this, brown cardboard. And what that'll do is it'll stop any weed seeds from blowing in from elsewhere and just hold it in a state of stasis until you're ready to sow or plant later on in spring. I prefer cardboard because once you're done with it, you can just gather it all up and just add that to the compost heap and you're good to go. Of course, you don't necessarily have to speed weed seed germination along. You could just let them pop up naturally. But by getting a head like this, you'll know that you've got at least a few cleaned and prepped areas to sow or plant into the moment the weather warms up. Remember, WESC is best. Weeds, slice and cover. Go WESC, my son. Go WESC. Well, that's everything prepped and ready. Time for a well-earned cuppa. If you're looking to get yourself super organised this spring, then do check out this video. There's loads of advice and ideas in there to get spick and span and your garden ready and raring to go. I'll catch you next time.